I recently learned that physicists are about to test whether we have free will with quantum computers. Yes, the headline is bullshit. You didn't really need me to tell you that, did you? However, the experiment is actually a good idea. So let's have a look. Staying well informed isn't easy, but we recently got a subscription to The Economist and I've never felt so well informed. The Economist is one of the few publications that consistently cover science, politics, economics and global affairs without dumbing it down or hyping it up. Their reporting is fact-based, international, well-written and to the point. What I especially value about The Economist is that they cover genuinely original material and I find their reporting generally balanced. They recently ran a very interesting article, for example, about researchers developing new benchmark tests for AI that have to grapple with the problem that the new generations of AI seem to know when they're being tested and sometimes hide their capabilities. Personally, I like reading the print version, but besides the online version, The Economist also has an app with videos, podcasts and an audio version of the weekly news so you can listen to the news while you're on the go. If that sounds like something you have used for too, here comes the special offer. You'll get 35% off their subscription if you use my link economist.com slash Sabina. And now back to the science the mystery at the heart of quantum physics is entanglement. It's what gives quantum computers their power and it's also something that we can't reconcile with our personal experience of the world for we never experience quantum effects. But what is entanglement? Mathematically, entanglement is a correlation. That is, you have variables that aren't independent of each other. As such, it sounds rather boring because correlation Correlations are literally everywhere. You see, suppose you bounce two billiard balls off each other. The motions of the billiard balls after the collision are not independent, because if you trace them back, they must have collided in the past. So the billiard balls are now correlated. This happens literally every time a molecule bounces off some other molecule. It happens a gazillion times everywhere around you, with you and in you. Here's the strange thing about entanglement though. You can measure how strong these entanglement correlations are between two particles. And they're stronger than you can explain if you think that particles are just balls bouncing off each other. That doesn't work. The way that physicists test this is with Bell's theorem. You see, Bell's theorem says in a nutshell, if you think that particles are really just little billiard balls with a position and a velocity, then the correlations between them have an upper bound. If the particles have quantum behavior, however, then they do not have definite properties until you measure them. And in some cases, this can create stronger correlations Relations. And experimentally, there are cases when the correlations are stronger than the bound from the non-quantum particles. This is what the 2022 Nobel Prize was awarded for. We conclude that quantum physics is right. The particles just didn't have definite properties until you measured them. That's the usual story in any case. It isn't quite right though, because there's another way to explain the observed correlations even though the particles have definite properties. And that's to say the correlations come from the way that the measurement device affects the particles. This is called a violation of measurement independence. What does any of that have to do with free will? It's that the assumption of measurement independence has also been called the free will or free choice assumption. This is because Bell argued that violating measurement independence means that the experimenter is somehow constrained in what measurement they can make. 
He called this superdeterminism. And this finally brings me to the new paper. The authors of the paper say that the more complicated one makes an experiment, the more entanglement one has, the larger the violation of measurement independence must be to explain observations. This is what they calculate. And a device that creates a lot of entanglement is a quantum computer. This is why I think think one of the authors told New Scientist that quantum computers may be helpful to test whether measurement independence holds. If it doesn't, that it supports superdeterminism. And according to New Scientist, the superdeterminist view naturally raises the possibility that the laws of physics are at odds with unlimited free will. What are we to make of this? For one thing, this free will assumption in quantum physics, despite its name, has nothing to do with what we normally refer to as free will in none of the definitions that philosophers like to use. Regardless of what you think quantum physics exactly means, the laws of physics are always at odds with unlimited free will. This is why they're called laws. If you jump off a bridge, you'll fall down and no amount of free will is going to make you fall up. A violation of measurement independence would be yet another law of nature that, yes, constrains what we can do, but free will is always constrained in that sense. The other issue with the proposal in the paper is that they don't look at any specific models for how to violate measurement independence. So if their test can rule something out, then what? It's like setting a trap for a ghost. I give it a 3 out of 10 on the bullshit meter because I think the paper's fine, except that it doesn't look at any existing model. In any case, Despite my misgivings about the way that people report on superdeterminism, I'm happy that someone's looking at this. Because maybe humans do have free will after all. But just to pick one of the interpretations of quantum mechanics, the one that makes the least sense. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.